Welcome to another episode of an inside job, uh, War on Addiction. <laughs> uh, I'm Ron, I'm the host, and I want to introduce my good friend, Charlie. Um, we share a lot of things. Uh, one of them is Vietnam, we were just talking about it. and. And another is uh, we both attend a 12-step program we have for a long time, and it's working. That's all. So welcome, Charlie. Thank you. Thanks for coming down, man. No problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we may as well get right into it, see where it takes us. How did it begin with you? Were you drinking? My father gave me my first beer, and I didn't like it. <laughs> what age? Uh, I was 17, and he told me if I was going to be old enough to get drafted, I was old enough to have a beer. And, uh, and I'd been waiting for it, and I had it, and I didn't like it, and that was it. You know, uh, I was a senior in high school right after that, and Peer pressure, you know, uh, Thanksgiving Day sure. football game, sure. Christmas, New Year's, Senior Skip Day, things like that. They were the only times I drank, and it would only be two or three beers, you know, and I yeah. would, that was it, you know. I, uh, but as I got older, I went in the military, I got drafted, and um, I didn't drink much in the Army. You know, for one thing, I was infantry, so. <laughs> you just, there was nothing really to drink anywhere. Uh, rice wine. Well, <laughs> there was certainly rice wine. And, and, and any time we did wind up getting beer, it was warm, so I just let the other guys drink it. Yeah. You know, uh, my old man sent me a bottle of scotch one time in a loaf of bread. You know, it was one of the care packages we used to yeah. get from families. And uh, I think like 25 guys took a sip out of that bottle and it was just gone. But... I, uh, I just didn't have any interest in it. Uh, it just didn't impress me. And when I did do it, it was just to look cool like everybody else. But that didn't last. I got out of the service. I got married uh, to my high school sweetheart. And it was, a, it was a nutty marriage anyway. Let me interrupt. How much you think Nam had to do with your drink and your life? I... I I don't think Nam had a whole lot to, well, not while I was in Vietnam, but when no, I come back from that's Vietnam. that's what I mean. When I come back from Vietnam, we were treated like crap. Right. I mean, it was, we, we lost the war, we were baby killers, we're all heroin addicts, we're all yeah. crazy, we're all nuts, and, and uh, it was, you didn't tell anybody you'd been to Nam. You just didn't tell anybody. Mm. And, you, you know, your own friends who didn't have to go called you a fool for going. Uh, you know, my father was a Marine in the South Pacific, and I was Army, and, and he sat there and said, they don't know. They don't understand. They don't know. Uh, we got a care package from the American Legion, and it had, it was huge, and, like, uh, my squad and I, we ate the whole thing in, like, 45 minutes, and when I got back from Nam, I went to the American Legion and thanked them for sending the package, and the guy sat there and said, we wouldn't send it to you. It was the wives. Ah. The wives of the, you know, yeah. they sent it, you know, and, uh, you know, it was just, I hung around and drank with a guy for a year and a half before <clears throat> we even realized we'd both been to Vietnam. Mm. He was on river boats and uh, I was in the field. Oh, river boats, yeah. yeah. And we were talking one day, something come up on TV and he says, yeah, yeah, I was there. And I goes, you're kidding me, Ronnie. And uh, he said, no, no. And, you know, he's, you know, and he did the same thing I did. When you came home, you just didn't tell anybody. And, you know, I drank because I was an alcoholic, but... Uh, but how, did, how do you think that began when, when you came back? Yeah, you know, I, I, I was bored. I divorced my first wife. I was uh, driving a bus at night, and I would come into the parking lot uh, at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. There were guys drinking beers out of the back of their trunk and, you know, to be part of, I'd go over and I'd have a few. And I, I got to the point where I, I was looking forward to it and I enjoyed it and I, I was getting this little buzz and I enjoyed the buzz. And like the first Friday night they weren't there, I missed it. 
You know, I, I said, oh, what am I going to do now? <laughs> you know, and uh, I worked in Lynn. GE was there, still is, I guess. And it was, uh, it was after all those places. Yeah. And I found where they were real quick. Yeah. And, uh, and it just, it was a very slow progression. Mm. Mm. I had a lot of fun with my bulls when I was younger. I really did. You know, I, uh. And most of the guys I hung around with were always in a lot more trouble than me. So any trouble I get into, I never really cared about it. Just right. didn't, didn't bother me. You know, mm. I really, really didn't. And uh, you said nutty marriage. <laughs> well, my drinking probably didn't help that. But uh, I was I'm Irish, and I got an Irish temper. And she, she was Sicilian, and she had a Sicilian mm. temper. So. <laughs> I don't know, I just said to myself one night, I'm out of here, and, and I left, you know, and uh, to give you an idea how screwy I am and how I think a little on the oddball side was, I didn't see her for four years, and then we ran into one another when we lived together for another two years. Wow. <laughs> you know, and in between, and during those four years, I, I lived with another girl for a couple of years, and uh, I've been married and divorced four times, Ronnie. <laughs> and <clears throat> a marriage counselor told me, you know, when she found out I'd been to Vietnam, said that explains you're emotionally unable to connect with in a marriage. And so I'm figuring she's educated, she knows, she deals with a lot of different people, she must be right. And I went to my very first Vietnam reunion seven years ago. And what well, was that? It was in Columbus, Ohio. A uh, guy by the name of Jeff Smith got a computer from his kids. He retired, and he started hunting people down. Oh, wow. And, and I ran into a guy at a hockey game in Manchester, and, and he had a NAM hat on. Yeah, my name's Charlie. I was there at 70. He goes, me too. I was with 25th, me too. I was with 2nd and 12th, me too. I goes, Alpha Company, me too. And, really? Yeah, 1st Patrol, me shit. too. And I go, I don't remember you. And, and he told me his name, and he had gotten shot. I guess in the foot or something, and uh, he was out of the field when I got there. And when he uh, healed up, they put him in headquarters. Oh, well, you know, as a clerk. Yeah. So I never yeah. met him, but he had been invited to the reunion, and he said, "I'll see you there." And I go, "See me where?" So he gave me all the information I needed, and I went. Yeah. And when I got there, <laughs> just about everybody there had been married to the same woman for forty-five years. No shit. Yeah. So I had. That's interesting. So my marriage is. I have nothing to do with Nam. I'm just really. I don't know. My life's too fluid or something. I don't know huh. what it is. I don't know what it is. So, so you think you have PTSD from there? Well, the same lady who told me uh, found out I had been to Vietnam. We had been in marriage counseling for like nine months before she found out. She sent me to Canal Street, in North Station, to the VA center there for a, uh, a psych evaluation. And they diagnosed me with PTSD. And I said, no, I'm fine. As long as I don't drink, I'm good. And they go, well, no, you're this, that, you know, whatever. And I can't remember exactly what was said, but they gave me 10%. Yeah. You know, and, and that was that. I, uh, but to be honest with you, Ronnie, if I don't drink, I'm OK. I yeah. have, I've never had a dream about Vietnam ever, not good or bad. Ah. Uh. Uh, did you always have a temper? Yeah, when I was younger, I had yeah, a temper. Yeah, so you don't attribute it to well, coming back. Okay, you're in a service, you're in, uh, you're in harm's way. You know, you, you view life a little differently, so sometimes what a lot of people worry about, you don't. You, know, you just don't. There's more important things to be yeah. concerned with. And, uh, and I would lose my temper at that. Uh, yeah, I would just like, what are you concerned about? What are you worried about? Let it yeah. go, forget it, and you know, and I would just get angry with that. Uh, and if I got into a fight, it was just a rage type mm -hmm. of thing. You know, what I mean, just I get in a lot of fights. Yeah, Boz, good place to get into a fight. <laughs> It was, you know, I'm like 500, <laughs> you know, sometimes I'd win because I was lucky and other times I'd just get hammered. <laughs> What's 500? Well, that's the average, like, you know, I win some, lose some <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> like in yeah. baseball. Yeah. And, uh, 
whatever. I, uh, <laughs> and, you know, well, whatever. All right. And I, I was a, I worked two jobs for 25 years. Really? So a lot of my drinking was, you know, in the truck, in a car, at yeah. work at night. You know, back in those days, you could ride around with a beer between oh, your legs. Yeah. You could tell the cop, yeah, I've had a couple, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm on my way home. And if, right. and if you could, you know, you were, you were, they'd let yeah. you go, you know. Right. But guys like me are the reasons why uh, they can't do that anymore. I got eight DUIs. Eight? Eight DUIs, yeah. My last DUI was 80, 87. 87? 87, 87, yeah. And, and when did you get sober? 88. 88, 88 yeah. yeah. Eight, and you didn't have to go to jail? Well, this was before they really started. Oh. You know, they're looking at guys like me and they're saying, we got to do something about clowns wow. like this. You know, so, you know, there's a lot of guys, second, third offense are doing time. Of course. You know, and uh, if I pick up a drink now, I will oh, drive. Both of us. I will yeah. drive. And if they catch me, and they will, I'll, uh, they'll bury me with an ankle bracelet. Mm. You know, I'll never see a car, or, you know, I'll be in jail, you know, because that's it. <laughs> it's an expensive proposition also getting busted for DUI or Well, today DUI. it is. You know, yeah. Back in the day, it was a little cheaper. You know, uh, my father was a criminal <clears throat> defense attorney, so a lot of times. Oh, really? So a lot of times, you know, I, I'd be able to walk, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, or it was, I'd have legal representation, it wouldn't cost anything. So they were enablers without realizing yeah. they were enablers. So know? he came back from the Pacific yeah. and he became a oh, lawyer. An attorney, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And he was, I had great parents. I can't sit yeah. there and say, oh, I right. was beaten. They put cigarettes right. out of my arms. I mean, yeah. I thought my parents were so-so until I started going to meetings and I heard some other people's stories. And I said, I had great parents. Oh, I yeah. did. You know, oh, I, yeah. The majority of, of the people I interview and the people that we both listen to have had a really rough Yeah. A their really environment was very uncooperative with their life. You know, they were dealt exactly. a, they were dealt a crappy hand to begin with. Yeah. You know, so I have, outside of fact that I'm just addicted to alcohol, I have no real, no real excuses. You know, I, mm. I really, really don't. <clears throat> when I was overseas, I had a, an E6 who was like 42, and he was like my mentor. He was like my father there. No matter what happened, he had a way of explaining it that it was like okay. Yeah, it was it was like you're gonna be okay. It, it's all right. It's, it's not that it's okay, but you're gonna be okay. And this is why we do that, and this is why we do this. And you know, and after a while, it made sense, and, and that was that. You know, no we, wounded. We're talking about the army, but yeah, yeah. in a sense, it has to do with your alcoholism yeah. or our <clears throat> alcoholism. Yeah. So no wounded. No, no. As a matter of fact, at the reunion, I was sitting at a table with five guys, and they're all talking about their disabilities, you know, their checks yeah. or whatever. And they go, "What about you?" I go, no, "I never get shot." And uh, they're all sitting there going, "Nothing, no shrapnel, no nothing." I said, "No." My lieutenant was sitting there, and he says he was always great at hiding. <laughs> you know? Yeah. There's a movie about that. Yeah. Jack Lemmon, I think. The, the commander doesn't see him for, for the whole thing. <laughs> Uh, Finally runs into him. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It affected me deeply, and I've said it before yeah. deeply. It's been 50 years, right, yeah. for both of us. And uh, Yeah, we talked 20 years ago when I first met you. Yeah, you know? yeah, no meds. And, and, I, and I talked to your wife, yeah. you know what I mean? You know, and, uh, and, she, and she said to me, he goes, I'm glad. I'm glad Brownie talks to you every now and then because there aren't many Vietnam vets who are combat. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. And, uh, and, you know, whatever. That's how we met. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, and so how many years has it been? Since I had a drink? Over 31. Yeah. Over 31 years. And I still, still doing 12 steps. And, uh, you know, I still do my meetings. Uh, I'm active. You know, I... Uh, that's what keeps me away from a drink. And just about everybody I hang around with is either mm. sober 
Or they just mm. don't have a problem with booze. Yeah. You know? There's a, a question that's asked. I know what the answer is for me. Uh, why do you keep going after 31 years? Well, people who don't understand the program, I tell them, well, it's my social life. You know, when I drank, I hang around with a guy with a bunch of drunks like myself. But now that I don't drink, I hang around with a bunch of drunks who don't drink. You know, yeah. and but actually, uh, I got to keep grounded in uh, in my sobriety because the disease I have will tell me that it's okay to drink. In other words, it will say, you know, you've been sober for so long and you know how to stay sober. I mean, so why don't you just go out and have a crazy weekend and then come in Monday yeah. and sober up? Yeah. But that's not what would happen. Mm -hmm. No, I'd, I'd be gone. I'd, that's and it. we've both seen you know, it yeah. a million times, yeah. you know, right? And I don't want to 18 be... 18 yeah. years, 19 years, yeah. stopped, 25 years. They stop going to meetings. And, yeah. And they think they can have a drink and the disease is telling them. So if I stay connected to my program and the people I know, because as much as I enjoy my life, it scares me to think that sometimes your mind will think like that. You know, yeah. <laughs> I was driving down the street one time with seven or eight years without a drink and there was a big sign on the billboard that said, the beer you've been practicing for. And he says, yeah, <laughs> I right. was practicing for that, right. you know. And uh, and then the big mouth beer cans they had a while back, you know, and they yeah. said, go, where I were they when I was drinking? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, it doesn't come in the picture, ever. I'll tell you, a bit of it. I haven't. I haven't told it on camera, but um, recently I was into other things. I've danced with the program, but I always had one foot in, right? Yeah. And I've had to be away from it uh, for various reasons. But um, two weeks, or maybe two and a half weeks, recently, very recently. Um, Everything was going really good in my head, you know, because, I don't know, you have a problem with depression or? I don't know, maybe mildly, maybe once in yeah. a while, I'll just get out of bed in the morning and say, I'm not doing anything today. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I wasn't going to the meetings. And then, like I said, it started off good. I just kind of became a hermit, right? A lot of meditation, blah, blah, blah. And a week and a half, I'm saying, and, 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 and it, it's happened to me so many times, something wasn't working right. And I, I, didn't, I didn't figure it out. And I said, what is going on? And then it just was getting worse. My head, uh, I got a thing with sweets, which I was doing very, very good. And I think it was last Saturday. See, I go to the, I go to the sweets. I'll go on a bender. <laughs> And uh, M&M's, uh, uh, <laughs> cupcakes, you name it. I go in that store if I'm on a bender. And I just said, Psh, go in, jump in the car, and come back with a bag full of shit and eat it <laughs> till I'm sick. Uh, but luckily, it wasn't a drink because that Saturday, uh, I couldn't control that. Right. You know, something something didn't work, but I know it was because I wasn't going to mean. It finally came to me, and I went to the first meeting again yesterday, and I came walking out of there feeling good. Isn't it, isn't it, uh, isn't it weird that something like that could happen? It could be so profound being without a drink, without a meeting, you know? I have no idea why meetings work, but they do. I asked my sponsor one time, how do they work? He said, just fine, leave them alone. <laughs> and uh, I never made my kids go to meetings, but, you know, they know I'm in AA and, you know, whatever. They know I do everything I'm supposed to do and I don't drink. And and I was a single parent for three kids. You know, I might have been married and divorced yeah, four times, that. but yeah. I had the kids. And, you know, one day I come home and uh, I was just... 
you know, you spill the milk, hug them the whole yeah. I'm just walking around being a pain in their neck. And finally, the older guy sat there and said, Dad, don't you think you need one of those meetings? Mm. I wanted to kill him. <laughs> yeah. But he was right. And yeah. I did. I, I went to a meeting. Like, you know, you come out and you're okay. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how it works, but that's why I keep going, you know. Yeah. That's why I keep And going. you really don't dance with it. You, Sunday night you're there, yeah. Friday night yeah. you're there. Right. And you never varied from. When, when my kids were younger and I had custody of them, I wasn't making the meetings like I wanted to. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I could feel it. I mean, I didn't feel like a drink, but I could feel that, you know, what am I doing? Oh, yeah. I don't like this. I don't right. like that. You know, why do I got to do this? And But if I'm regular, I just do it, and I don't worry about it much. I yeah. keep things real simple, Ronnie, really, really yeah. simple. You know? Yeah. I, uh, I don't like complicating them. And, I do. Yeah. And I have. All, all through the thing. You know, like uh, Big Lester. Like you, oh, uh, basic, yeah. Yeah. man. He's basic. That's a just keep going, yeah. and I'm just well, not cut out like that. And I gotta figure it out. I gotta figure out. Why. I listen to everyone who speaks. Yeah. You know, whether I agree with them or not, I listen because something they say may save my life. I was told when I first came around, you gotta learn to listen, so you can listen to learn. Yeah. You know, a lot of the things they say. Like, right. what, what, what's that? You know, but. If you stick around long enough, it all makes sense. And uh, Les is one of them. You know, I, I love listening to him. He usually sets me straight without, I don't mean he actually says something to me, but what he says, I listen to him and I go, hey, you know, oh, yeah, that's how I yeah. like to do it. Roland was another one. He's passed. Ooh. Roland. I know. Yeah, right. Yeah, and, I was uh, going, whoop. Yeah, and then there, was, it, there was a bunch of guys. The old timers are all gone. You know, they're all they're passing away, and now right. I'm an old timer. I mean, <laughs> right. Don't come to me for advice. Yeah. I don't have any. Don't drink. But, uh, yeah, but you help a lot of people. I'm around for them. They help themselves. I mean, I'm not responsible for anybody no. picking up a drink or not. No. I'm just there, and they hang around with them, and we're friends, and, and if they need anything, they can call me, and, you know, I'm, and I'm good. You yeah. know, it's... Uh, you know, I was talking to someone on the phone when I ran it to you that he, you know, and, uh, uh, and <laughs> they, uh, I don't know. It's a strange place. It's very difficult to explain. I, uh, I'm a member of Area 30 is uh, from Worcester to the Cape, from Rhode Island to oh. New Hampshire. All right. It's the, yeah. the area for the meetings. And uh, I'm a member of what they call uh, the Cooperation with the Professional Community. And we address nurses, doctors, law enforcement, court officials, you know, things like that. And you speak with them? Yeah. In other words, we'll sit there and we'll, we'll tell a story for five minutes and open it up for questions. Hey, can you picture me at Harvard Medical School? <laughs> <laughs> Longwood. First time I went on, I wore a t shirt that said Wicked Smart, you know, and I yeah. didn't realize I was supposed to dress. You bit, weren't, uh, like uh, I told you. Right. And, uh, How would you know? And trying to explain the meetings to them, you know, when I needed it, I didn't understand it. You, yeah. know, I, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's not easy. You Boy, know? it's good you do that, because they don't get too much training from what I hear. No, they... Nurses, yeah. certainly doctors. Okay. I had a heart problem, so I went into the saw a, a cardiologist, and uh, they put a double overlapping stent in. And, you know, I hadn't had a heart attack, no stroke, no scars, the muscles yeah. great, all the arteries were shot. And, and, I, and I tell every single medical person I come across is, you know, I don't drink. I'm yeah. an alcoholic. I don't drink. Yeah. And I stay away from meds, you know. And, uh, and, I, and I told this cardiologist on three or four different visits, you know, the first thing words out of my mouth, you know, I'm, I'm alcoholic, I don't drink. So the last day I see him, He's got a list of all the food I can eat and all the food I can't eat. <laughs> oh. And he says, a glass of wine with supper every night will do your heart a lot of good. Yeah. And I says, I'm an alcoholic. I don't drink. He goes, yeah, I understand that. Why are you talking one? Yeah. And, uh, well, you know. <laughs> what, what's the saying? One, one is One's too, many. too many and a thousand, a thousand ain't, enough, ain't enough. You know, and, uh, and he didn't get it. And I said, OK. No. I said, OK. No. You know, that's it. And that's why I, I do that CPC work. If, if I can, if one person just plants the seed in an alcoholic's mind that, you know, there's help out there, 
because at the end of my drinking, Ronnie, I couldn't stop drinking for an hour and a half. Yeah. I just, it just, it owned every facet yeah. of my life. Yeah. You know, and uh, it was nasty. It was, and it, the hopelessness and the despair that comes with it is, you know, absolutely debilitating. It, it, you know, you just wonder, you know, what am I doing? Is this the rest of my life? Am I going to wind up on the street? And I was that, I was living in my truck. Yeah, you I know? was and, pretty close. Yeah, and, uh, but I had a strong family. You know, as long as I wasn't drinking, they were there. You know, a lot yeah. of people, I was in a, uh, a halfway house in uh, South Boston, the Gavin House, and nobody there, there was 25 of us, had any family they could really go to because they mm -hmm. had burnt every single bridge. I did. Yeah, you know, and uh, it's uh, in the first warm day in March, half of them went out. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <You know? laughs> They're just gone drinking, drugging, yeah. whatever. That's the yeah. disease. That's the disease. Yeah, and that's they're back. Right. They're back three or four days later, looking to borrow five or ten bucks, and you don't even know who they are. Mm. They don't even look like the guy who left. Oh, I agree. You know, I, I mean, agree. they just you know went right straight yeah. to the street, and one guy thought he was doing okay because he had the key for a bathroom at a gas station, so he could go there at night mm. and sleep on and the stay. floor. Yeah. yeah, that's that's where I was going. It's a yet, Ronnie. If oh I, yeah. If I pick up a drink. It could be me. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I have no doubt with how addicted I am uh, to things. So there's no question. Yeah. I'm going all the way. I'm going to the uh, 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 Honey Farms down on <laughs> West Street, uh, but it's going to be Wyman's <laughs> Package Store. And um, yeah. Uh, we're going to wrap it up in a few minutes, but we're going to, you want to do another half hour? Yeah, sure. I, We've got plenty to talk about. I like about. to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Bradley, we'll wrap this one up.